and just to follow up from what I was uh, from that opening the, the rudder post opening I was showing you just now inside um, there it is again from the outside but I've marked I've actually marked the, the spot where it should be which is right there <laughs> Uh, dear. It's a bit embarrassing, but you know, wife and I said, if we're gonna if we're gonna do videos, if we're gonna do a bit of a YouTube thing, then we really should do it walks and all, you know, showing the mistakes. And and when you're building a boat, the, the the thing about building a boat is it's something you learn as you do it. It's Sunday afternoon now, and I've got some of the work done. I've taken the skeg off as I showed you earlier. But you can see I've had to cut the doubler away, at the back end here. And um, that area there where I've had to cut the skeg off, you can see there's quite a, quite a big groove in that doubler plate there. But uh, it's not too bad. I'll just weld and fill that and then grind it smooth again. Um, clean up this hole. I've got to replace, you can probably see up in the hole there, a piece of that profile bar. I've got to replace that and... Uh, and the existing web that I put in there, I've got to pull it out. Oh, sorry, not pull it out. I've got to, uh, the existing web placed in there, I've got to extend that right across to pick up the other side. Um, and then I've got to make an extra piece of dub blood. It will come from, from where it's cut there, uh, somewhere back to about here, I'd say. So once that doubler's on and the, the hole's filled and <laughs> repaired, then I can cut the next hole, you can just see the the mark there where the uh, that's the centre line of the rudder stock shaft so I'm running out of time, it's mid afternoon Sunday and I'm not going to get this finished this weekend which is a shame basically I put myself back a whole weekend but you know that's life I'll get the, the best part of this repair done today this patching up and then um, next weekend I'll get the skeg and the rudder back in place and get them welded up and then I can move on to uh, more work up top. Now because I've got to move the, the rudder shaft and the skeg back at uh, 14 inches I'm going to have to place another another web stiffener right across that area there after I put the, the external doubler on so these I've cut these plates out ready to go um, and that's basically the two web plates that will go inside the boat and span across the bottom of the hull and that gap you can see in between here is where there's the rudder post that I took out I've had to take that out and grind it and clean it all up but that's come that's come pretty good now, so that's not too bad. But uh, again, that will be that will be placed in in that kind of arrangement. I'll just pull it in, just to give you a rough idea of how it will sit through the boat. This part here will extend out through the bottom of the hull, and this will be on the inside. And also where I where I cut the other where I cut this uh, rudder post out, I'm going to have to fill in as I said earlier. I'm going to have to fill in the profile bar, and I'm also going to have to fill in the gap between those two existing web plates. So I've already cut those out. That goes in between the web plates, and the profile bar will run in the middle like this, something like that. And there's the rudder shaft sitting back on the bench. It's a real shame, but that's life. That's the way it goes. And once this is all back in place and welded in, I'll be a lot more comfortable knowing that the boat's going to steer and handle correctly. I, I did contact the designer, as I think I mentioned earlier, and um, to see if I could uh, get away with leaving it where it was. But he said I would be chasing the helm all the time. Even that 14 inches would make enough difference to make the boat kind of snake a bit in the water and be continuously correcting course. 
So it's well worth the effort to find out and correct it now.